So this is the periodic periodicity quiz. And I'm going to, before I begin talking about the quiz itself, remind you about these pictures. So this is element number three, be lithium. This is element number four, um, beryllium. Element number five, boron. Element number six, carbon. Element number seven, nitrogen. It would go on to eight, nine, and ten, but I ran out of room. Then underneath element three would be element 11, and it would be bigger than element three because it's further down the column. Then as you go to the right, in the element 12 would be smaller, element 13 would still be smaller, and so on. So the atoms are getting smaller as you move from left to right, and they're getting bigger as you go from bottom to top, or top to bottom, bigger from top to bottom. So if I put element 19 down here, which I don't think I'll do because it's, well, here it goes, element 19. So you put it down, it'd be something like this, it'd even be still bigger. We'll put it right over here where it fits better. So that would be element 19. So we'll put element 19 in there. Oops. So element 19. All right, and so then number uh, 20 would be smaller and so on. All right, so now let's look at the questions. The largest electronegativity. So the largest electronegativity would be the one that attracts electrons the most. So that would be the smallest one, number seven. It's small because it's attracting electrons. Electronegativity increases until you get uh, to number 10, which is neon, and the noble gases won't have an electronegativity because they don't make chemical bonds. So the highest electronegativity element will be element nine. Of these elements, We've got bromine, fluorine, iodine, and chlorine. If you look at the periodic table, bromine, fluorine, iodine, and chlorine are all right here in this column. So we're looking at the trend as you go up and down. So as you go up and down, the atoms are getting bigger. Now we just said if they're bigger, they don't pull on their electrons as much. So the biggest element here would be 19. The smallest element of these would be 3. Well, bromine, fluorine, iodine, and chlorine are not over there with 3 and 11. But the same pattern exists over here. As you go down, the atoms get bigger. Okay, so the most electronegative element would be the smallest, and that would be fluorine. So the answer number one was A. No, was B, sorry, fluorine. Okay, now the one with the smallest radius would also be uh, of the top. So the smallest radius has the highest electronegativity, so that also would be uh, fluorine. The lowest first ionization energy of these elements. Now, you remember ionization energy is the energy that is required to remove an electron. So going back into our pictures up here, which of these would have the most ionization energy? Well, it would be the smallest one, because that's the one that's going to be holding its electrons the tightest. So the higher ionization energy means a smaller atom. Let's so come back down to these. Which one is the, is the smallest? Element A, B, C, or D. So that would be element B. There, element B, right here. Which one has the largest radius? Nitrogen, neon, boron, or lithium? Now that's three, five, seven, and ten. So go back to your picture at the top of the page I drew. Here's three, five, seven, ten will be over here. So which is the smallest? That's going to be ten. So number ten is uh, neon. Number five, cations. Our blank have a, have a charge. I want you to notice that cations have a T in them right there. A T looks like a plus sign. So that's going to help you remember that cations uh, have a plus charge. They're positive. And if they are plus, they lose electrons, so they're going to get smaller. So the correct answer there would be that um, cations are positive with a smaller charge. Or, excuse me, positive with a smaller size. And now going to number six, the most active metals. Now remember, metals are active when they lose. Whoops, when just had, it's, a, it's an N, not an M. When losing one electron. Sometimes two, but they're most active when they're, they lose electrons. So big atoms lose. 
So where are the biggest atoms that are metals? Now go back up here to our picture. Remember, you start at the top, they get bigger as you go down. So of these three, the most active would be element 19, which is potassium. And even if I add the next element underneath that, it would be bigger and bigger. So the biggest, most active metals are going to be in the lower left-hand corner, the lower left corner. Number seven, anions, A, negative ion. See those three pieces? There's the A right here. There's an N right there. And then ions, A, negative ion. So they have a negative charge. And they are going to get what? If you add an electron to make it negative, don't you get larger? So adding one electron without changing protons is going to make things, pop, uh, get, make things larger. So it's going to be negative and larger. Of these, which has the largest radius? Well, these are in the potassium, hydrogen, cesium, and sodium are right here. So here's potassium, here hydrogen, cesium, sodium. Atoms get bigger as you go down, so which one's the biggest one? It's going to be cesium. So we put a little circle around C for cesium. Are the following elements which has the smallest radius? You got neon, boron, lithium, and nitrogen again. So the smallest radius, go back up here. Smallest radius, the one's furthest to the right. So that's going to be neon, letter A. So where are the elements with the small radii? Let's look back up at our picture. Where are they? Well, it kind of looks like they're over here, which would be toward the top and the right. So the top and the right upper right hand corner. The energy required to remove an electron, that's just a definition you have to know, that's ionization energy. All right, given chlorine, which is bromine, here's a periodic table, here's chlorine over here, bromine right below, which is bigger? Looks to me like bromine would be bigger because it's further down. So we've got chlorines here, which is bromine, a bigger one, so it'd be circle D. I think we know that the atomic radius gets smaller as you go from left to right. If you don't know that, go back and look at this picture. As you go from left to right up here, left to right, the atoms are getting smaller. Given the chlorine atom, which would be a chlorine ion neg Cl minus. So Cl minus means you've gained an electron. So if you gain an electron, you should get bigger. So the correct answer would be circle D. This one over here is the biggest one. It's bigger than chlorine. Because you gain an electron, you get bigger. All right, as you go down a group on a periodic table, remember this picture. As you go down, what was happening to radius between 3, 11, and 19? So as you go down, the radius seemed to be getting what? Larger. So increasing. 16. A vertical column is also called, you just have to know this name, fam, col, vertical columns are either called families or groups. All right, now chlorine versus argon. Chlorine is element uh, 17, argon is element 18. You come down here to the periodic table, chlorine's here, argon's there. What happens to the size as you go left to right? They get, they get smaller left to right. So since argon is to the right, that's chlorine. This is argon. Since argon is to the right of chlorine, it's going to be smaller. So the answer would be circle B. Sulfur, however, is on the left side. So So you have to pardon me here just a minute because somehow I've lost my marker capability.
All right, so I'm going to stop the movie here. We'll post this part, and then I'll come back and finish the rest of it while I figure out how to get my pencil back.